while I'm waiting for the clear semi-gloss lacquer to dry on the data plate, I did an experiment with the Chrysler. I masked it off. I sprayed some brass paint on the cardboard and I used my little ink step stamp method here. Now I haven't even cleaned this cabinet yet. I just wiped off the Chrysler lettering. But I masked it off and put some paint on there and it probably doesn't look great in this light but uh, trust me they came out beautifully. So we'll be washing this whole cabinet once the clear lacquer has dried and then we'll polish up this piece of plastic here once the Chrysler uh, badge is reinstalled and a new grill cloth is in there and this is polished up I think it's going to look pretty good but I was waiting for everything else to dry and I figured I'd give that a go and now I think I'll move on to attempting to repair that big hole in the speaker and here we are back at the speaker and we have a fairly large it's over an inch long and three-eighths of an inch or over here is closer to half an inch wide section of the cone has just entirely been chewed away and disappeared and it's right in the portion of the cone where it has to flex back and forth so what I think I'm going to try to do those of you who are regulars here will remember the 1947 Chevy radio and this is the speaker from that with the rubbing the dragging voice coil that we just couldn't fix we ended up replacing the speaker however I think I can probably harness probably from this side a section of the speaker here with you know with these part of where it flexes and graft it into here and where it's going to be the same cone type material. This cone is actually very rugged and in and, and decent shape as is this one except for the section that was eaten away and it's actually got a hole in it over here so I'll cut a section out large enough from this cone because there's no saving this speaker. It's so warped. There's a warp here, warp here. It's warped all over the place. The water ran into the trunk. This would radio had been stored in the trunk of the vehicle or the boot for those across the pond and uh, water had leaked in there and stayed in the speaker for quite some time so there was no saving it but perhaps we can section a piece of this out and graft it in here and I'll just try to find a selection that has there are two slightly different sized speakers but if I can choose wisely, I can get a section that will graft in and closely match this radius, I'm hoping. And will still allow it to flex and yet fill in that hole. This would probably work just fine as it is. But I'm afraid that over time, it'll just start to travel. It'll start to tear from the flexing. So if I can reinforce that with a piece of this. I'm of two minds here, just leave it be, but I'm sure this piece is going to cause me problems here. So I'm going to see what I can do to graft a piece of this onto that. That's and the point. my Aussie anyway. outlet came in, and I was very pleasantly surprised to find out that it's the exact same spacing as its U.S. counterpart fits right on a standard US box. This one happens to be a weatherproof one for outside. But I thought it looked better on the bench than a steel one. Um, so that's all set to go. That's plugged in to my step up transformer over here. And the name on that is Electrix. I think that comes from New Zealand. So that originally came from very close to David's home over there in Australia. I was pleased to see that the Aussie boys are quick learners like we are here in the States. Uh, don't grab the bare pens. We learn at a young age. 
and we're quick learners. I think the Brits are a little bit slower learning because they're always yelling at us about being able to touch the metal pins on our plugs. We only run 120 volts and the Aussies run 240 and they still find it okay to use these plugs. So, and yes, I know the British plugs are fused. We have versions of ours that are fused as well. Just kidding, guys. Don't get all upset. I understand why you have the protected plugs over there in the UK. But uh, we've been getting along just fine, and obviously the Australians have been getting along just fine with these plugs for a long time. This filter capacitor is leaking its guts out everywhere, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace that one right off the bat. There's a 16 microfarad one here that we in frame, yeah, that uh, is also part of the filter system. Um, probably give that a quick check before I power it up. The coupling capacitor for the audio tube is one of these, they almost look like um, a porcelain pan finish on them is the only way I can describe it. They, we used to have a lot of pots here that had a porcelain finish, a blue, a white, blue and white speckled finish on it. I don't know anything about these. I think I'll lift one leg and check it for leakage and if it's fine I'm going to leave it. There's uh, this one here is funny looking but I think that's just dust stuck to the wax. I don't think there's anything leaking out of that capacitor. But I'll give that a quick check because that is across the B plus and we have another capacitor here that's uh, 0047 now it goes directly to ground from pin 5 but the documentation that David sent over had a note on here that said the schematics wrong even though it matches the radio it says uh, that this should be connected across the primary and not to the chassis as shown in the schematic. And yet, mine is connected to the chassis. So, And uh, they want us to check two of these resistors that set the maximum gain for the 6N8 so that there's no distortion so we'll go ahead and check those two resistors but it says here max gain 6N8 with no signal going into the uh, we'll take a look at those two resistors anyway make sure they're within tolerance if one's a 10 meg and one's a 47k so we'll take a look at those two resistors and get that taken care of this is uh, an error it shows the off and on going to the volume control which it doesn't the off and on is connected with the tone control and the volume control is a separate control so that is correct C14 yeah, connect across the primary of T3 not to the chassis uh, we'll try it both ways maybe there maybe there's a distortion issue or something uh, going on there because that will affect the tone output. But at any rate, it should function as it is. It's been working like that for many years at this point, but we will check these two resistors. So I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to change out the filter cap that's leaking, uh, take a couple of checks on resistances, make sure that my coupling capacitor to the 6AQ5 is... Um, is not leaking and we'll take it from there um, you know the 6N8 obviously is the um, detector and first IF amplifier or IF amplifier so we'll make sure that uh, you know the gain is correct with these two resistors here anyway Moving on, we'll take care of all of that nonsense and come back. All right, I've moved you over to the other side of the bench so I can get to the variac more easily. This is the condition of the filter cap I removed. And while I was in there, I did the 
8 microfarad as well. Although I don't know where. Oh, it's over there. I haven't tested this yet. This one was probably okay. I don't see any signs of leakage yet, but uh, it's old enough to warrant replacement, especially since its brother here is uh, spilling its guts, so to speak. All right, the set is on. Step down, step up transformers on. I'm going to go to dim bulb. And we'll start up with the Variac. Now what I'm reading on the Variac is going to be half the voltage that's coming out of the transformer because I'm feeding it with 120. And I know the transformer itself draws something on the order of 230 milliamp years with nothing plugged into it. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Alright, everything's hot. Start bringing the voltage up. That's uh, 30 volts on the Variac, so that should be 60 volts heading into the radio. Either both of the pilot lights are dead or we're not getting power through. I do have the switch on on the plug. seeing an indication I've got 60 volts that means I'm putting 120 to the set at this point theoretically so that's half its rated voltage and again I see nothing I don't know if the switch is any good probably should have checked that huh? let's try turning it off and on and see what happens here Oh, I'm not hearing anything, so perhaps the switch is dead. Let me shut everything off. Okay, and the outlet is off. I'm hearing nothing coming out of the switch whatsoever. So perhaps that's gone. are up there. Ah, let me get a knob on here and we'll be back. Okay, the switch is fine. It just needed to be turned off and on a couple of times. And it's operating. Not uncommon after they sit for a while. The knobs that are on there are not the knobs that belong to the radio. I don't want those on there while I'm working on it. They're somewhat fragile and I don't want to bang them up or damage them in any way. So I've just thrown some random knobs on there. So I can easily turn the tone control and the volume control and tuning. Alright, let's try this again. Uh, very X down, turn it on. And I'll start bringing this up. And yes, we're drawing current now. So there's 60 volts coming out of the Variac actually through the drop of the lamp. That's 47, 50 volts. So we're giving the radio about 100 and I'm just guessing at this point those lamps are no good because it is drawing current. So I'm guessing those have failed. I've got plenty of those. Uh, does it say what they are? I'm going to guess 47s perhaps. 6.3, 300 milliampers. Yeah, they're across the filament line. 47 would be fine. Well, let's see what we got. We're still on the dim bulb. There's 90 volts out of the Variac. That's almost 70 volts out of the dim bulb. So that's 140 into the radio. Oh, and I hear static. I already hear static. Let's 
turn it up a little more. The current draw is fine, so I'm going to go ahead and go full power here. There's 180 volts into the radio. Yeah, it's working. For what? For what, Daniel? What are you going to take into court for? Well, two years ago, there was a lot of problems with him. Now, I checked the transformer when I was uh, putting the filter caps in. The transformer is wired for 240 volts. The voltage here runs about 230. The next tap down is 220. So I'm going to leave it on the 240 volt tap and uh, it'll run a little bit. It's, it's running at this lower voltage, uh, 90, 180 in, so it'll be fine on the 240 volt tap when I plug it in out in the garage. I have uh, a place in mind for this right out in my workbench out near my workbench out there where I work in the garage and I'll just tap into the welding outlet which is 240 volts or 230. Can you hear the computer running? Or is that the clock? No, that's the camera. Wait a minute, you gotta... He assaults... Of course, they arrested him. Okay, I got it. So they... You, you did call the police. Now, let me ask you. Uh, you're... Alright, I'm going to bring this up to 120 volts. Two hundred and forty volts into the radio. Something to move that that's wooden or plastic. Here we go. Location money. It's not that easy to get you out. You're there for a while. Well, my question to you, Bill, is if you're here like in July, once he sends us a notice and stuff, is it going to be like between me and the negotiation, or can I take? And kind of as I expected, the antenna peaks at a slightly different spot than it was. It's been broken twice, but it will be fine. You can see where the tape was here originally, I think. You can see that, yeah. And it's a little happier over here at this point, but then we haven't done an RF alignment on this This is handle on the law. And I'm going to guess from that capacitor position, we're up around 1370. The first Sunday of the NFL season is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook. Gives you more retirement at income with ten dollars saved, and your money is never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes thirty percent, you lose nothing. Even people who are on track have shifted money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop Home working years work, sooner. A so if you're scratchy, happy, you want a bigger, better retirement, <laughs> less money, a free copy of this brand new <laughs> Boomer Dilemma That's at one 506 2020 Today you'll get a free plus two hours behind the scenes footage. I'll even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. So don't do that. Right. 506 2020. That's 6 2020 1 800. He does that on the base. This has been a bumpy.
from pandemic to inflation. And remember, we haven't. I took a look. The 47k is about 52k. The 10 mega ohm is reading about 2.9 mega ohm, but it's still in circuit. So I'm going to have to lift that, check the gain on these two, or check the value on these two resistors to make sure the gain is correct on the 6 and 8. And I have not yet. Um, check the rest of the capacitors and so on and so forth. But now that we know the set's working, I'm going to go ahead and uh, recap it in its entirety. By the way, those porcelain looking capacitors, the .01s were absolutely fine. I kind of thought they would be. They look like an early poly cap of some sort and I ran them right up to their rated voltage of 630 volts or 650 as it's saying. Uh, it says, yeah, 600 volts. I ran them right, 625. I ran them right up to 600 volts and they were fine. So, those will be good. Those who Fox News. So, it's we'll bring you back after it's recapped and we'll see what we can do about repairing the speaker. At ground zero in New York, victims' names were Give this thing an alignment. Best we can because it doesn't have <laughs> kilohertz markings on here anywhere. This is strictly uh, Australian radio, and they only went by what stations were available. They just, you know, marked out all the station locations. So we'll we'll take some guesses as to where things should be, and uh, do an alignment on this. Change. But we will not change. We'll be back. We can change never will is the oh there's division. our buddy here where we stand today I've cleaned up the cabinet it's still got a little bit of uh, plastic polish on it we'll give it a final wipe down and a good coat of wax towards the end there but the place on top where something had melted I'm trying to find it now ah oh, yeah, I can just barely see it in here what I did is whatever hit it of course you know it raises a little mound on either side of the track well I took some 800 grit wet paper and sanded it down until all of the high spots were gone then I went over it with uh, 1500 and then 3000 grit and finished up with some plastic polish and the cabinet is looking great other than my dirty fingerprints all over it and I cleaned up this polish gave this a polish and it came out looking great once the radio's in there. Any other blemishes will disappear. And again, it's still got fingerprints all over it for me. But that'll clean up nicely. Oh, and one other thing. Let me grab something here. The grill cloth that was originally in there was an ivory kind of to match the tone of the cabinet. And I went to the uh, store that sells cloth and such the other day and my brain is leaking out I'm forgetting ah, the name of the place at any rate that's a pretty close match to the cloth that came out of there and I've got enough here they cut me off a strip long enough to make like five of these if I mess up the first one for the grand total of two dollars and nine cents now if I would bought a 14 inch square piece off of the internet of grill cloth and it's basically you know bulk material that somebody's cut up and selling it would have cost me 15 or 16 dollars or you've got the unit recapped and turned it on and when I was first working on this you probably heard a squeal early on in the video and uh, I ignored it for the time being knowing knowing I was going to be in there to do the caps and checking resistor values, so on and so forth. I only found one resistor that was uh, a little bit out of tolerance and I've replaced that. But uh, a problem cropped up and that was there's a lot of noise in the audio even when the volume control is turned all the way down. There's a lot of crackling like thunderstorm noise and hissing and growling going on. And if we take a quick look at the schematic here, we've got the 6BD7, which is our detector first audio, 
and a 6AQ5, which is our final audio output. So I took our signal tracer, and of course the noise was present all the way down the line, all the way to the anode on this tube, extremely noisy. And then I went to the grid on this tube, and it was quiet. Now, the sharp-eyed among you will probably see there's a 10 meg ohm resistor in here, and I can hear a bunch of you out there yelling, it's that 10 meg ohm resistor. And that was my first thought, too. Uh, those high-value resistors often get very noisy. But that thing is dead on 10 meg ohms, 9.98 or something like that. And uh, I lifted one leg and I put the signal tracer and the noise function across it and it's dead silent. And the noise persists. It's this 6BD7. I just put an order in for a couple of them. They'll be here in two days. <clears throat> And I'll demonstrate that to you. I'll show you what's going on. Uh, I cleaned the socket, of course. You know, I did all the obvious stuff before I uh, pulled the trigger on the tube. But I'll show you what's going on here. Uh, turn the set on. And as it wakes up, it'll probably start making the noise. I've got the audio signal tracer here. There. Can you hear it? Kind of making crunchy noises that's real light at the moment. See if we can get, make it act up a little bit. Something's breaking down in the tube or it's got a loose connection. A lot of times it gets a whole lot worse, but if I look, listen to the grid, on this tube with the signal tracer and it's silent. Now I'll move over this blue wire goes to the anode and you can hear that for sure. There's the grid there's the anode. Oh, oh there's something up there dumbass. sometimes it takes off and gets a whole lot worse than that it just gets incredibly loud but that's definitely coming out of that tube and I've checked all the resistors around it of course I've checked all the obvious stuff but, uh, that tube has got something breaking down on the inside and every once in a while when I hit it just right it breaks into oscillation Hear the anyway, we've got one of those coming and we'll be replacing that tube and that should cure that noise problem. Okay. Moving on. We're uh, zeroing in on finishing up the electronics restoration part of this. Too high mortgage. It's now working well. Uh, my tubes, or yeah, the tube I ordered, tubes, I actually ordered more than one, uh, came in and now with the volume turned down, this is absolutely silent. I can tap it and there is no noise. No more static crashes, lightning crashes in the background, no more hissing with the volume turned down. It cleaned it up entirely. So something in here, probably cathode breaking down, insulation on the cathode breaking down would be my guess. I'll keep this and, you know, just for testing purposes. I've marked noisy on it. I know that it works, though, if the tube is, you know, functional. But this, it, this is our total... Uh, casualty pile here. A couple of resistors that were on the edge of tolerance. Two filter caps. Uh, that one of course was spilling its guts out. The two tubes that got damaged when the antenna broke and floated around and again no one's fault it was just that the way it was mounted in there was wasn't secure and it's 
just the way the radio was manufactured and uh, these waxy paper caps and these were in horrible horrible condition they're nothing but resistors but the radio function that shows you how robust the operation of these sets really uh, really are it, it amazes me the condition that some of these sets will come in and still be functional and sound okay Years, liberals are only it took me other people's money several shots of uh, control cleaner to quiet sure. down this volume control now he did send along another potentiometer but uh, I finally gave it a couple of shots of deoxid I'd use regular volume control cleaner I've got some generic stuff and it would quiet it down and it would come back a few minutes later Man, but you all, since but I've hit it with the deoxid being shipped to Mom's vineyard to sanctuary it's absolutely fine so I'll probably leave that control in there you just and should it die in the future, I've got 500k pots, uh, the one he sent me, and I've got a box full of pots. And Hillary Clinton accusing DeSantis of human trafficking now. Tone control Remember, works fine, tuning's now working fine. Oh, the speaker, not exactly gorgeous, but we have a good solid cone in there now. Uh, piece of that... Uh, speaker you know the one from the 47 chevy we sacrificed a piece of that cone because that speaker was beyond saving border so that's been taken care of uh i've been working on the cabinet we'll finish getting the grill cloth in that and put it all together and then we can wrap this one up and move it out to the uh its bench in the garage i will wire this into my welding outlet out there i've got 240 volts right at one of the workbenches and there's just a shelf up above the bench where this radio will probably live and entertain me while I'm out there working in the garage and I'll just wire this into that 240 volt line and we'll have a, an Aussie outlet out there so we're looking forward to getting that done that'll probably get done next spring after I get back from Asia videos and, and if it wasn't for them and this will live inside for the winter where it's nice and warm and uh, dry I keep the garage air conditioned in the summertime to keep the humidity down as an air conditioner out there that runs on a timer just to keep the humidity down in the garage uh, it was cheaper actually than buying a dehumidifier and it automatically expels the water outside so two problems solved with one shot all right enough waffling here we'll uh, Oh, one other thing I should mention. This being all marked out with Australian radio stations, I have no reference for the frequency to do a frequency alignment. Now, I did download all of the Australian radio stations, uh, AM stations. It gives me the frequencies, and it gives me call signs. However, <laughs> out of three pages of call signs, none of them are on here which just I, I was baffled by that evidently call sign al allocations have changed over time or there's some other portion of the list I'm not seeing but that's not too critical I know 610 is around here somewhere and it covers the full range of the local radio stations of 80 and there's no numbers on here anyway for me to reference so it'll be fine I'll, I'll uh, take a shot if I can do an IF alignment I'll do that although these types of IFs can be tricky I'm, I should probably warm it up a little bit with a heat gun before I hit it because the wax makes it extremely then, hard to turn the cores and they tend to shatter and the radio is working well all over the country of course, there's a lot of noise. That's the camera you're hearing. But that's the station, the real weak station that uh, plays rock and or old time rock and roll. And that's coming in all right. Here's Hillary and what she said. And it's early, it's early in the afternoon, so there's not a lot of AM that comes in here this time of day anyway. 
So the set's working fine. It's been recapped. We've got good tubes in it. Uh, the chassis has been cleaned up. It cleaned up fairly well. There's a rubber strip that I'll have to reinstall here that goes up against the front or inside the cabinet. It goes from the front of this to the inside of the cabinet. And we'll be done. We'll put it together and we'll show you what it looks like. And we're closing in on finishing up the cabinet. We have the grill cloth in. That's been glued in and uh, looking like it's been there all its life. The little piece of plastic that I found was from this area right here. It was just a little sliver had broken off the edge of this. So we've glued that back in. It actually hadn't hurt the structure at all. The, the clip was still solidly in place. Just that little piece of plastic was missing right there. There was a open seam here where the adhesive had failed. We fixed that. And if you look inside, you can see there's a brownish discoloration from the adhesive they used to install this metal frame. And at some point, I don't know if this was repaired after the fact, but there's some staining here. It looks like there might be some hairline cracks through the plastic. And that adhesive has come through and there's a little high spot. I tried sanding this down and it appears to be that is well and truly into the plastic. We buffed it down and polished it and it appears to be in the plastic. It's hardly, hardly noticeable and unless it's pointed out to you, you probably wouldn't really see it. I have yet to add the Chrysler badge. We'll put that on there. Slide, uh, get a piece of foam rubber on the inside where there's one missing. And then we'll slide this into its cabinet and do a final reveal on it. And there are a couple of little minor scratches here and there that would take a lot of sanding. Deeper than I want to go into the uh, plastic cabinet to remove. But all in all, it's cleaned up beautifully. Uh, really going to look nice sitting up on the shelf. So I'm looking forward to using this thing. That's a long way to go. Broken bat. No speedo has pops. So why choose an ordinary egg? Oh. A slow 58 when it becomes caught. Tall fungus. Uh Ever since the rough greens for the first time, my dog, Uno, has changed. He's a completely different dog. I hear from people all the time in the audience. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of letters have come in who have had the same experience with their dog. They've heard me talk about rough greens on the show. They get some for themselves. And as soon as they... And there we pretty much have it, folks. Um, in the previous clip, I tried turning off all the lights in here to see if I could get a decent signal, but... There's just so many wall warts in this house and different switching supplies. But, boy, this thing has cleaned up beautifully. And I just cannot thank David Tipton enough for sending me this set and giving me the opportunity to work on one of these Chryslers. It's been an absolute joy. The attention to detail is, is just knocking my socks off all along the back inside of here there's little felt bumpers so that the plastic is pinched up against the felt and won't resonate when you turn the volume up and there was a foam strip which I've replaced up here to make sure the cabinet doesn't vibrate you know in and out or against just little touches like that that they've done the screws all have little metal clips to thread into instead of just threading into the plastic. They've got those little metal clips you saw when I showed you the back where I did the repair. I've got to guess this was not a low-end radio. Uh, it sounds wonderful. Yuri trying to punch their ticket and get there today, it's but the second best record will be... Kind of hard to tell in here with all the noise, but uh, it sounds great. It, it 
plays beautifully. The sensitivity is good. Uh, you can see I've got the little Chrysler badge in there now. And it's nice and secure. Clipped right in there very nicely. I love the way the dial looks in the dark. It's well lit because of that little hood that's over it. So, I think it's time for a little celebration here. But before we do that, let's take a look at a before and after. Uh, this is the after, of course. And here's a look uh, at what it kind of looked like when it came through the door. And note how cloudy the plastic over the dial face is. And now how it looks nice and clear. It polished up beautifully. Uh, just looks great. I am just tickle pink with this set. And in keeping with tradition, I uh, think it's time for a little celebratory snack. I've had advice from David and from another Aussie that if you spread this very thinly on well buttered toast that it's quite good. And uh, cheers David, here we go. My goodness, that is pretty good. <laughs> My suggestion is don't smell it and don't taste it raw out of the bottle. But butter up a piece of toast and put a very thin layer on here. Good grief, that stuff's pretty good. Maybe I will make it in the Outback. Holy cow. And I was ready. I, I, I did have an antidote, just in case. We had some uh, Glenfiddich 14-year-old here, just in case I needed an antidote. But I think we can save it. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out, both the radial and the Vegemite. Good grief. You learn something new every day. Oh, and one other Aussie sent along this comment. It was probably the comment of the day. And I think, after seeing this comment, maybe I'll try this in the transmission on the Harley and see if it shifts a little smoother. <laughs> Just kidding. So I guess that wraps it up. Man, that is good. Who knew? The things you learn. Thank you again, David, for an opportunity to work on this radio. It's just, it tickled me pink to have this set and look through it and see how one was built in Australia. This is going to be one of my favorites. This will get have a, uh, a, uh, a prime position on my bench out there. This will be my go-to set. Excuse me for talking with my mouthful, but I'm enjoying that. That's incredible. I was expecting to. Uh... <laughs> wow. All right. So I guess that wraps this one up. Thanks for watching. I uh, probably won't be heard from for a while because I'll be in Southeast Asia for a while. Uh, I thought about making some videos from over there, but there's so many people making videos from over there. I don't think I'd have anything to add. But who knows? I may drop something in on the Internet just to say hi. That's it for now. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Thanks for riding along. And uh, make sure you drop over and see David's channel. He's uh, quite the restorer. Take care. Bye for now.